Yeah, my work in the area of complexity of simulation is, um, uh, I'm not a computer scientist, I have to admit, uh, I have to say in the first hand, uh, I'm the one more from the social scientist, from the philosophical background, and the interesting thing of complexity is that, uh, in particular modern societies, but I would say social complexity evolved over thousands of years now, and um, it's interlocking patterns not only between human individuals interacting with each other, but also with the natural and social environment and the emergence of a social environment, which again feeds back into the individuals. So my uh, particular work is a social science um, on theory, helping using agent-based simulation models as a tool for developing and exploring sociological theories. And in the particular project in which I'm now involved, I'm more a data analyst, I would say. Um, we're working in close collaboration with computer scientists in the same, in the front of the same desktop, so to say, and we kind of exchange ideas how uh, to implement sociological ideas in program code of a running simulation model. And so it's quite a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm working in a project called LODOS on the global dynamics of extortion racket systems. And I present, uh, the objective of the project is to understand relations, social norms regulating uh, the relations between society and criminal organizations and also the social norms within criminal organizations. And I was presenting a, a paper uh, on, on conflict resolution within this particular criminal organization, the Sicilian Cosa Nostra. It's based on mostly literature analysis, and there were several wars in this criminal organization, and we analyzed this with the means of simulation models. Uh, so the interesting question from a sociological, philosophical point of view is um, uh, the ongoing Hobbes problem when he pointed out the idea that individuals living in a state of nature, they are in a, f uh, a state of war against everybody against everybody, which is a very well-known problem in the philosophy of social science. And obviously it is well known that Hobbes invented the idea of a state as uh, a regulating, enforcing the legal norms. And criminal organizations operate outside these legal norms. So they provide a lab, so to say, for exploring the, exactly this problem that already Thomas Hobbes uh, posed in his uh, centuries ago in the 16th 17th century. So we uh, analyzed how war and peace emerges in, in the criminal organization. It's based very much on empirical data. So this was my presentation here at the conference. And we use this as a, a kind of um, comparison uh, uh, to a different model of a different criminal organization. And so this work I presented here was um, more only based on literature analysis and the other model uh, was based on close collaboration with the police uh, uh, and we got court files and I was the one to analyze these court files that you finally could be transformed into to a model code of a running simulation model. And the interesting thing perhaps is that the Mafia, on the one hand, is a very old, very pertinent criminal organization, whereas the other organization collapsed after 10, 15 years, which is the usual lifetime of a smaller scale criminal organization, when criminals just join together to make an awful lot of money, so they are more self-interested. <laughs> whereas in the Mafia, the consent of social norms emerged within this organization that they know they belong to a certain organization which already have a name, so to say, the Cosa Nostra. So um, perhaps one thing to add is, this is a very theoretical watch I now present here, <laughs> but um, the collaboration uh, with the police is a two-way direction. They inform us how they perceive the situation. Uh, we, they got us the, the, the data, the court files, and we got additional information from them to say, did we make a correct picture of all that? But then we give it back to them and they can use it as a kind of 
thinking tool um, to see um, to get sense of what they perceive as a police, because the police is not inside the criminal organizations. They only have, after the court files are closed, they have a little bit of picture of it. But in principle, they only see their dead man on the street, so to say. <laughs> and then have to start their investigations. And the conceptual models, frameworks that we developed, um, particularly we distinguish between punishment and revenge, uh, in as a cognitive concepts inside the heads of the criminals. And this, as I say, makes them help to get sense of what they see from outside uh, as policemen when they try to get a picture of what's going inside the criminal organizations that they 